I would rather die than to preach a gospel without signs and wonders. We can't fully proclaim the gospel without signs and wonders being a part of it. Put your hand on your head like that. Ball spots, I call you gone. The gospel without signs and wonders is an empty shell. Miracles are the authentication of the gospel. And I've seen things multiply like gas in my car. People have the money in their bank accounts multiply. People have the money in their wallets multiply. All sorts of amazing miracle signs and wonders since God released this angel of creative miracles to accompany us as we preach the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. There are many very popular pastors and teachers and YouTubers within the charismatic movement that are saying, when you're presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone, you need to be doing signs and wonders. And if you are not doing signs and wonders, then you are not presenting the full gospel. You're only presenting a partial gospel. And some of them, even go so far as to say that there are two Gospels. There's the Gospel of Salvation, which is just getting people saved. And then there's the Gospel of the Kingdom. And the Gospel of the Kingdom, you see, that is where you are performing miracles, signs and wonders. You're casting out demons. You're healing the sick. You're raising the dead. All of that. This is a very dangerous teaching, and it is a false gospel. And so we are going to look at several popular people, teachers within the charismatic movement that are saying just that. And I understand, and I want to say this at the outset, that I know there are people Christians within the charismatic movement that do not follow these teachers and would call these men and women that I'm about to show you false teachers. I understand that. But these are the main teachers within the charismatic movement. They're extremely popular, and they're leading a lot of people astray. And so we are going to listen to what they say, and we are going to debunk what they say from Scripture. And we're going to start with our first example, Isaiah Saldivar. Romans 15, 19, by the power of signs and wonders, by the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way to Lyricum, I fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Paul writing to the Roman church saying, by signs and wonders, by the power, Romans 15, 19, by the power of signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. So this is what Paul is saying. If I don't have miracles in my life, in my ministry, the gospel is partial and it's not the full gospel. The gospel is not whole without signs and wonders and miracles. If you are in a church that doesn't believe in miracles, that doesn't pray for signs and wonders, that doesn't pray for miracles, according to Paul and according to the word of God, they are not preaching the full gospel. They are preaching the partial gospel. This is why the Bible says, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start praying for the sick in about five minutes. Do not log off. This is why Jesus says, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached to all nations, then the end will come. Here's the problem. Most preachers today do not preach the gospel of, of the kingdom. They preach the gospel of salvation. Here's what they do. Everybody gets saved. Everybody gets saved. Everybody pray the sinner's prayer. And they say, that's the gospel. That is not the gospel. That's the gospel of salvation. Jesus says, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, the gospel of the kingdom is yes, God can save you, but God also wants to get those demons out of you. God also wants to deliver. God also wants to supernaturally heal. God also wants to give you joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. So everything, everything that I said, just about in the opening of this video, Isaiah Saldivar said in that clip right there. 
So pastors, if you are standing faithfully in front of your congregation every Sunday morning and you are preaching Christ and him crucified for the forgiveness of sins and you're preaching that Christ rose from the dead, you are preaching a partial gospel unless you are doing signs and wonders. That is what is going on here. And that is what Isaiah Saldivar is proclaiming. Um, this is false. Not only is it false, it's extremely dangerous because it's a false presentation of the gospel. It's a false gospel, period. Now, he talks, or he quotes, I should say, Romans 15, 19. Let's put that back in its context, and we're going to read Romans 15, starting at verse 17 and reading down through 21. This is what Paul says. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem all the way around Elycrium I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ, and thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. So, Paul does talk about signs and wonders there in that passage. But why is that the case? Well, the reason why is because Paul was an apostle, a big A apostle, to the Gentiles. And this was not something insignic insignificant. He says he is an apostle to the Gentiles. Romans eleven thirteen. 13. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry. So what was the sign of a true apostle? 2 Corinthians 12, 12, Paul says, the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. So Paul met the criteria of an apostle. And one of the tests of a genuine apostle was that that apostle could do signs and wonders in order to verify his apostolic authority. And that was the reason why Paul did do signs and wonders. And so, you know, there were plenty of places. Now, I went through the entire book of Acts, and I went from chapter 1 all the way to the last chapter, and looked and just to make sure that I wasn't, um, I wasn't wrong, the only ones, the only men who did signs and wonders in the book of Acts were the apostles and those whom the apostles commissioned, like Stephen and Philip, the evangelist. And you can see St uh, the apostles commissioning them in Acts chapter 6. And you can see Philip doing signs and wonders in Acts chapter 8, which begs the question. After Philip preaches to the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8, he doesn't lay his hands on them to impart the Holy Spirit to him to them, like you see a lot of these NAR folks do. What does he do? The, the, you know, Peter and John, or the other apostles, I believe it was Peter and John. Anyway, Peter and I believe it was John come from Jerusalem to Samaria, and they are the ones that impart the Holy Spirit to the Samaritans. Why? Why didn't Philip do it? Philip was commissioned in Acts chapter 6 along with Stephen. You had Barnabas that was with Paul uh, that uh, did signs and wonders with Paul, uh, Silas as well. But those are people who were with the apostles, who had been commissioned by the apostles. You don't see the entire New Testament church doing signs and wonders. You don't see that at all in Acts. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of places in the book of Acts where the apostle Paul did not preach signs and wonders. One good example was uh, uh, Lydia. And I got to find, I'm looking at my notes here. Here we are in Acts chapter 16. Listen to this. Paul, uh, or Luke says, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside 
where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. Now listen to this. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Nothing there in that passage at all about signs and wonders. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of places in the book of Acts where the apostle Paul preached the gospel and didn't use signs and wonders. If you look at Acts chapter 22 all the way to the end of the book, where Paul is, is standing before the authorities and he is presenting Christ, especially to Festus, I believe it was Festus, he's not using signs and wonders there when he proclaims Christ. And the last chapter of Acts, where he is in prison and there's an entire crowd around him, he is not doing signs and wonders there. He is presenting, just presenting Christ and him crucified. That is the gospel. There's, it, it's Christ and him crucified. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul lays out what the gospel is in 1 Corinthians. And i got to go back to my notes a little bit here. But this is what the Apostle said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, he says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first important, importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. That is the gospel. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again all according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. There are not two gospels, folks. Don't let anyone deceive you with that lie. There is only one gospel. Here's our next example, Bill Johnson. The gospel of the kingdom of God, Paul says, is not in word only. It is in power. There must be the demonstration of power. Power in our personal life to overcome a sin, temptation, those kinds of issues. But it's power for the miraculous. It's power to confront the impossibilities of life. This is what we are assigned to live in, to walk in, is to walk in the absolute power of God, to demonstrate the resurrection of Jesus. Every time you and I pray for someone and there's a miracle, it's a demonstration that the resurrection of Jesus is real. If I pray for you and you experience a miracle, you've just seen what God can do. If I pray for you and nothing happens, you've just seen what I can do. It's the absolute clothing with power that makes it possible for us to demonstrate the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, most of you have probably heard Bill Johnson and others at Bethel say things similar to that. But let me start with a quote that stood out to me. This is what it says. This is what he said. The gospel of the kingdom is not in word only. It is in power. There must be the demonstration of power. And when he says the gospel of the kingdom is not in word only, he is quoting from 1 Thessalonians. Let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. This is what it says. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you, for your sake. So then what does Paul mean by word and power? Well, I'm going to read you a quote from the Lutheran commentary. This is what it says. 
The second proof of their election is their reception of the word of the gospel. To receive here means not to hear only, but to heed, to accept. Though to accept the gospel necessarily brought affliction, they received it with uh, joy of the Holy Ghost. And they at once became imitators of Paul and of the Lord himself in self-sacrificing devotion to spread to the spread of the gospel of salvation. So that's the Lutheran commentary. R.H. Linsky says this, But when the gospel is rejected, it gets to be in regard to those who reject it word only. They hear it as mere word, as something told, and stop with that and ignore what is told, not so the Thessalonians. So someone who just hears a word only is one who rejects the gospel. The Thessalonians did not do that. The Thessalonians received Paul's word. Let's move on to our next example, none other than Creflo Dollar. Something took place in verse 19. Oh, this is good. Let's look at verse 18 and 19. Look, look at this. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by the word and deed. Now watch this. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about, he says, I have fully preached. Now I want you to notice, fully preached. Oh, he just made a distinction between preaching the gospel and fully preaching the gospel. Notice what he defined as someone who had fully preached the gospel. He said, mighty signs and wonders. See, you can preach the gospel, but you don't fully preach it without signs and wonders following. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? When we start seeing signs and wonders following the preaching of the word, then I have fully preached the gospel. But now we can't do that because you're so ready to go home. I'm trying to figure out what, what's going on with church today. We're not an hour and a half. I ain't going back to that church no more too long. I'm asking you to give me an opportunity to fully preach the gospel. May I have an opportunity to fully preach it? May I have an opportunity to preach the word of God and then see signs and wonders operate as a result of preaching that word because it's not so greedy by everybody trying to run out. These men have no business whatsoever standing up there and teaching and preaching. They are, they are disqualified. They are preaching heresy. Well, Creflo Dollar is a word of faith teacher. We all know that. But I just wanted you to see that even the word of faith pastors, the, the blatant, outright prosperity gospel word of faith teacher not ashamed to be a word of faith teacher not trying to hide it in some of my teaching like Joel Osteen does or like uh, maybe uh, some of these others like um, I, I don't know like uh, Joyce Meyer and, and others try to do um, but Creflo Dollar is a word of faith teacher but these guys also teach this kind of thing that without signs and wonders you're not preaching the full gospel. And we've already covered the Apostle Paul preached the gospel in plenty of places in the book of Acts without signs and wonders, but he did preach and he did perform signs and wonders uh, when he preached the gospel in other places. And that is because the true sign of a genuine apostle was, number one, they had to have seen, first of all, they had to have been, well, first of all, they've had, they had to have seen the risen Christ, the risen Lord. Second of all, they had to have been sent by Christ himself. And thirdly, they had to verify their apostolic authority with signs and wonders. They had to be able to perform signs and wonders to verify that they were apostles. And that is exactly what Paul did. And Paul himself said, he is an apostle to the Gentiles. Christ commissioned him. He said, have I, am I not, an, he, I think it was to the Corinthians, am I not an apostle? Have I not seen the Lord Jesus? So that is why the signs and wonders were done. This does not mean that Isaiah Saldivar 
Bill Johnson, Creflo Dollars, and others um, have the author- have the power to do signs and wonders. They really don't. You see, the signs and wonders within the broad charismatic movement, what you see in the videos, what you what you uh, you know you you see in some of these churches, they're not the same kind of miracles that the apostles did. The apostles did genuine, verifiable miracles. These people do silly things like this. I'm being activated. I'm being activated. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. No more. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The power of God is falling. Somebody says, fall on me. Fall on me, Holy Spirit. I'm not waiting another minute. Jesus paid, Jesus paid, Jesus paid, Jesus paid in full. Come on, somebody clap your hand for what God is doing right now. I promise you, I promise you that was not the Holy Spirit. And that is some of the creepy stuff that I was talking about. Those are the miracles that people are claiming to do, things like that. And even in what you see in the deliverance ministries, that stuff is just, that is not, that is not God because Christians can't be demon-possessed. And we've talked about that before here as well. The point is, What you see in much of the charismatic movement do not match the miracles in Scripture. They just don't. Here's our next example, Mario Murillo. David Wilkerson, in a sermon called The Fully Preached Gospel, said one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. He said, without signs and wonders, Paul the Apostle would not have been an effective preacher. He said it was the miracles that caused people to hear him. I know some of you are not used to knowing that David Wilkerson said these kind of things, but I do my homework. And in the the message, the fully preached gospel, he said signs and wonders are why Paul had an audience. Then he said something else. The tragedy today is, is that because the gifts of the Spirit have been abused, that it's an excuse for the church to ban them. Now, I did some research, too, and uh, I found David Wilkerson's sermon on Sermon Index, and I read what the little, what little bit was on uh, the, the web from that sermon. And, yeah, Mario Murillo was right. David Wilkerson did say that, but David Wilkerson is wrong in the sense that all Christians need to be doing signs and wonders. Again, that was the sign of a genuine apostle. Paul was, uh, Paul was showing his apostolic authority by preaching the gospel with signs and wonders. And again, go through the book of Acts yourself. You'll see that not every time the apostle Paul preached did he use signs and wonders. Um, so that is the first clip. There's another clip that you need to see and hear by Mario Marilla, watch. When I was at Berkeley, I wanted an intellectual approach to the gospel. There were 44,000 students on that campus. It was the most leftist radical campus in the world. I can't even imagine a a more communistic campus than Berkeley, even in China. But let me tell you, when when God began to tell me to win the lost, he told me miracles, signs and wonders Preach the word, let the spirit flow, let miracles happen. I was terrified. 
I didn't understand how miracles came, but I, I decided that I would rather die than to preach a gospel without signs and wonders. I'd rather be dead than to have a message that relied entirely on my ability to communicate. I don't know what to say about that. I would rather die than to preach the gospel without signs and wonders. I'd rather be dead. Um, now, Mario, people like you are actually making a mockery of the gospel of Christ. When you are doing the crazy signs and wonders that NAR folks like you are doing, you are making a mockery of Christ, and the world sees that. Here's Atheist Telltale. This is Robin Bullock, and he's a famous televangelist. I would be willing to bet if you have an older person in your family, a grandmother, grandfather, a, a dad, a mom, an aunt and uncle, who is mildly religious, they most likely know who this guy is. He's pretty famous. He went on this TV show or this, this live stream with this guy over here in the corner named Steve Schultz and Roger Stone, of all people, Donald Trump and Richard Nixon's fixers, if you will. And in this live stream, this is back in April of 2022. It's relevant to now. I'll, I'll get to it in a second. Bear with me. Roger Stone comes out here and claims that there is a demonic portal above the White House, like hovering above it and demons are all coming through or some other nonsense, right? No reason to believe this, of course, but Robin Bullock reaffirmed what he was saying as the resident prophet of God or whatever. He claims to be a prophet of God. Anyway, Robin Bullock claimed to have done some absolutely bizarre things on January 6th. He talked about it in this. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up in the first place is because I want to give you a little bit of a lead up into who this guy is before we talk about the main story, the main subject here, which is his daughter's of all people, coming on his show and doing a guest appearance and saying some off-the-wall stuff. Seriously. Now, it's my understanding that Mario Murillo spoke out against people like Kat Kerr, I think, if I remember correctly, maybe even Robin Bullock. I, I can't remember the, the whole scenario. It's been a while ago. And I get that. But it is people like Mario Murillo in the NAR, Mario Murillo, Patricia King, Bill Johnson, the folks at Bethel, that, and, and even the Demon Slayers that are doing these wacko, crazy things that are causing the world to mock. They are, they are actually dragging the name of Jesus Christ through the mud by what they are putting out there on social media, on YouTube. It's just absolute it's, it's it's really sickening. It, it really is. So what you see today, folks, again, in the charismatic movement is absolutely nothing like what the apostles did in the New Testament. It, nothing like that. Go through the book of Acts. There were genuifiable, genuine, I'm sorry, genuine, verifiable miracles. The miracles that Jesus did, genuine, verifiable miracles miracles what these people are doing fake or um demonic at worse it's just it it's it's horrible stuff it it really is our next example is sid roth the miracle shouts that there's not only a god but God is personal and mm. interested in me as an individual. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I can't imagine sharing the gospel without signs and wonders. I mean, the first church needed it to break from traditional Judaism to Messianic Judaism. They needed the signs and wonders. We need it just as much today. And gent, even though it specifically says in the New Testament that Jew requires the sign, all people, yes, all people need that sign to cross over from a non-believer to a believer. And Vlad's just right there, right along with Sid. Yeah, yeah. Shaking his head, agreeing with him. 
that's just absolutely laughable. It's just what Sid said there that all people need a sign in order to cross over. It is laughable. Let it sink in for a minute. So think about it. From the end of the apostolic age all the way through the ages, everyone who preached the gospel was preaching with signs and wonders. People during the Protestant Reformation, the preachers during the Protestant Reformation, Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, they were all preaching with signs and wonders. I mean, certainly there were little pockets throughout that were supposed prophets and hearing from God, and but they were, they were deemed heretics by the church. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous, and yet so many people are following these men and women. It it just it, it it's it just boggles my mind that um, people are not reading their Bibles and opening up the Scriptures and saying, "Wait a minute, uh, is the Apostle Paul didn't do miracles here? Wait, he didn't do miracles here when he preached the gospel, or whatever." Very little. Uh, knowledge of scripture today. It's very disturbing. So here's the next example, Tracy Eckert. I know every time I take someone through deliverance, I think I get delivered because I'm casting that demon out and I'm like over here burping and, and yawning and shaking. And I was like, Ooh, I think that came off me too. I tell you, I tell you that because the kingdom, in the kingdom, signs and wonders. Do not follow anyone who preaches the gospel without signs and wonders. Because the gospel is not preached in word only by a demonstration of the power of God. Period. They should know who you serve by what you do before what you say. The lost are not looking for a lecture. They are looking for an encounter with a living, powerful, loving God that knows that them. I'll never forget the first time that I heard somebody prophesy. I thought it was so bizarre. I wasn't a believer. But I remember thinking to myself, I knew the person that was getting a prophecy and I remember overhearing it from a distance. And I remember something inside of me leapt. And I, and I thought to myself, I want to hear from God. You see, the world is crying out for the real thing. And we have the real thing. But we have to be the real thing to give the real thing. Can I get an amen? Not for me, you can't, because you don't have the real thing, Tracy. You do not have the real thing. You have a false gospel. I'm telling you, you get hit with the power of God. I had so many people preach the gospel to me before I actually got the gospel preached to me by the Holy Spirit himself who showed up and, and spoke audibly to me and said, rebuild my temple. It was at that point that I said, wait a minute. God talks. It's what shifted everything. And my heart became arrested in love. Amen. On fire. I got baptized in fire before I was ever baptized in water. That's what John was talking about. Man, if you, if you, are, if you are not feeling it, you need to be hit with fire. This morning was fire. It was a river of fire in this house. And we have to say to ourselves, am I really going to settle for less than that? So the Holy Spirit came and preached the gospel himself to her. Well, folks, let me just tell you something. The Spirit of God is connected to the Word of God. So when the pastor stands in that pulpit and he preaches the gospel, yeah, the Holy Spirit is preaching the gospel to you. Every time you open up your Bible and you read what Jesus did for you on the cross, guess what? The Holy Spirit is revealing that to you. He is showing you. He's right there. Every time you open up the Word of God and read it, you are hearing the voice of God, and you are hearing the Holy Spirit speak to you. And when you read, again, when you read what Jesus did, the Holy Spirit is preaching to you. She, what she means, though, 
is that the Holy Spirit came personally to her and spoke audibly and preached the gospel to her audibly. Wait a minute, God talks? And if you listen to her testimony, that's what she says. The Holy Spirit spoke to her and told her, rebuild my temple. What you see in the hyper-charismatic movement is not Christianity, folks. What you see in the hyper-charismatic movement is false signs and wonders and a false gospel. Be warned. Mark and avoid these teachers. Thanks for watching.